three ways to deploy the Azure VMware solution. The first is via the Azure portal. So you log into the Azure portal, you search for Azure VMware solution, and you deploy it like any other Azure service. Uh, you can also deploy AVS via an ARM template, Azure Resource Manager template, and you can also deploy via the Azure command line interface. Now, regardless of which provisioning method you select, what you're getting when you deploy AVS is what VMware call an SDDC, a Software Defined Data Center. Now, a Software Defined Data Center includes Software Defined Storage with vSAN. It includes Software Defined Networking with NSX. But I just want to call out, you don't need either of those uh, solutions on-premise in order to take advantage of AVS. And you also get ESX as well as vCenter. Now, an important part of the Azure VMware solution is a tool that we call HCX, Hybrid Cloud Exchange. This is also included when you deploy the AVS service. And HCX is a key component to the solution in that it allows us to provide different options for moving workloads from on-premise into the cloud. Uh, so we can use L2 stretch networking, which essentially allows us to do a live vMotion of running workload without an IP change from on-premise into AVS. It also supports what we call a layer three uh, uh, segment creation, which allows us to do a bulk migration. Now, in terms of provisioning time, uh, the service takes around about 90 minutes to two hours to deploy. And the entry point for Azure VMware solution is three nodes. You are able to create uh, multiple nodes, of course, and creating an additional node takes around 15 to 20 minutes. So we believe that everything that you need in order to set up a successful cloud migration transformation data center extension is all included when you deploy the Azure VMware solution. Some great points there, Andy. I think what I'd like to touch on is the integration with our Azure ecosystem. So um, you've covered off uh, moving from on-prem into AVS, but the additional features really come into the, the integration piece. So because this is a Microsoft first party built service, what we've done is integrated within our native ecosystem. Now by that, what I'll give you some examples. So uh, Azure Arc has been designed not only to work with our native portfolio, but also AVS and on-premise. Things like Azure Managed Backup have now, again, been integrated, not only with AVS, so it's it's you know now part of that, that service, but you can also use third-party solutions as well. So there are a whole variety of third-party backup um, services that you can use today as well. Now, the service itself, um, because it's in the same ecosystem, because you're using those same Azure tools that you, you have on-prem, you can also bring things like SRM, and vRealize. So whatever you use today on-prem, you can use to manage your AVS environment as well. Now, just touching on, on, on the fact um, around that deployment time where you mentioned 15 to 20 minutes to bring up a node, it's, it's great because you can also consume AVS on an hourly basis. So if you are spinning up extra nodes and you only need them for the peak, you can pay for them on the hour and your fixed workloads, you can run them on reserved instances where you benefit from a 50% discount. And it's also worth mentioning that those reserved instances are flexible. So say for example, we do want to start modernizing some of the workloads and perhaps you'll need less nodes in the future. You can exchange them for some of our native services. To get started on Azure VMware Solutions, it's probably very different to how we would suggest getting started on Azure Native IaaS and PaaS. It's a lot simpler. And what I would suggest doing as a first phase is looking at an RV Tools output. An RV Tools output with the, uh, the scope of VMs that you're looking to move over, so the number of VMs that you're looking to move over. And from that, we're looking to find the following data points. So um, number of VMs the size of those VMs. So the RAM, the CPU, and the used storage. With those data points, if you're able to share that with us, we're able to, to work out how many nodes that you'll need for this service, 
And if you want to do, do some of this yourself, you can log on to the Azure portal and use the um, Azure Migrate tool. So you, um, again, from there, you're, you're able to identify how many nodes that you'll need um, in order to migrate your on-premise workload into the AVS environment. Lastly, I'd like to leave you with, once you've done the RV tools output or the Azure Migrate piece, engage with our teams, engage with the teams over at Microsoft and VMware, and we'll help you design a solution that will not only be able to get you to do a motion back and forth, but also get you ready to exit your data center. No, thank you, Amit. I think you raise a really good point there on sizing. I think sizing is a key component in being successful with the Azure VMware solution. And the great news is, as you've alluded to, we have lots of choice, we have lots of ways to size that environment. I think the only thing that I would add from a technical point of view are just two tips on networking and migration methodology. So from a networking point of view, I think it's important that we get the core foundations right. And so making sure we're using the right IP address spaces will just make sure that we can move workloads seamlessly between on-premise, Azure, and also AVS. I also think doing some upfront planning on your migration methodology will also help. So whether you're gonna go with a live layer two stretch network where you'll vMotion your workload across, or whether you go with a layer three network approach, we can accommodate both, but it will just help if you do some of that planning up front. And another top tip would be around firewall rules. So firewall ports do need to be open between on-premise and AVS. And again, getting that done up front before you deploy the service will just make your life easier. And then I think finally, we shouldn't forget data operations. So once we've deployed the AVS service, we need to think about how we bring some of the VMware skills that we already have into that equation and how we integrate those with existing Azure services as well. So making sure that our operating model accommodates AVS, I think is important to the success long-term as well.